ever wanted to do this, then you've come to the right place. This video will teach you everything that I know and consider useful about Unity Explorer. Your first question might be, how do I even install this thing? Well, you do it like any other mod. Install Bepinx, there's plenty of videos on how to do it. Then place Unity Explorer into your plugins folder. You can find it on Thunderstorm. When you launch Ultra Kill and see Unity Explorer pop up, close it immediately with F7. You must do this before the intro ends. Now we're ready to work. Let's go over the basics. We'll work on the standard 2x2 cube. Both the arm options only allow you to change the size, but Unity Explorer allows you to do more. Press F7 to open the Unity Explorer. On top of the screen make sure that Object Explorer and Inspector are selected. Go over to the Inspector menu and choose World. Now select the cube with your mouse. It should look like this now. Here we can adjust its position, rotation and size. Input the coordinates with spaces in between. Keep in mind, size in this menu and size in the default Ultra Kill menu are two different things. I will show why with. Use this Insane Shade button to copy paste an object. If you look carefully, there's a small gap between these blocks. Let's fix that. Use the Destroy button to remove an object. In the Components menu, Mesh Render is the most important to us. It allows you to change the appearance of the block. Scroll down to Materials and inspect the material. You can use RGB values to adjust the color. Some objects will have blank textures, while some, such as enemies, have already covered textures. The coloring will look different on them. If you want to switch the texture entirely, locate the material you want, use object search or inspect an existing object, copy the material to clipboard, and press paste in the material section. Congrats, you've turned the grid block into stone. Truly black magic. About the size differences, have you ever been annoyed by glass scaling weirdly? Well, Unity Explorer can fix that. And keep in mind, changes made in Unity Explorer except position and rotation of objects will be reset when reloading the map. A useful thing to know is the basic cover material. Use and recover those if you can't find something you want. Basic cover white can be recovered into any cover you want. Keep in mind, if you change the cover of the object without instance at the end, you'll change all future objects. Time to talk about the scene explorer. You can find everything that is located in a valor here. The green squares mean an object is activated. Let's deactivate the lake. Click on the objects to open them in the inspector. For example, we can navigate the lake folder to find the water and change its color. Now it's a lake of blah! The most interesting here is the player object. We can do all sorts of interesting shit with it. For example, turn on the heat phase in any part of the level.
but the coolest thing are the guns. We can activate all guns equipped at once like this. Click on weapon to edit it. For example, we can modify revolver projectiles. Let's set the default beam to a flash prison eyeball one. The charge shot will be set to a mind flare laser. And the coins will be set to no, which means no value. Keep in mind your weapon will be reset if you approach a terminal. Anyway, here's what it looks like. We have no coins. Our beam looks cool, but we aren't able to friendly fire drones now. And our super beam is not accessible because we have the wrong travel. Let's change that to a normal shotgun. Hmm, okay, let's see. It seems our mind flare beam is deactivated. Fix that and... Uh... Oh. Be ready for unexpected shit to happen all the time because you clicked the wrong object. You can actually remove enemy immunities with this element. Just choose whatever enemy you don't need to hit either way, like an idol. You can toggle stuff that has not yet been activated, like the ship and the unused tower structure in 5.2. If an object has no parent objects, it means you can add a don't destroy element to keep it loaded. We can use this to transport parts of levels into other missions. Let me demonstrate. We have set the ship to be not destroyable. Load 5-4. Go to the arena. Change the ship's coordinates to teleported there. Adjust it. Remove everything unnecessary. And here we go, we can fight Leviathan on the Pyramid ship. The Fermin will be a bit buggy though, but the Leviathan works fine. There are a lot of options when modifying enemies. First, enemy texture switching. To do this, you need to locate a skinned mesh renderer element. Now scroll down to materials, find the material you need, copy, paste, all done. Now some enemies have more than one material used, for them you need to copy multiple materials. But keep in mind, your clipboard only holds one copied object at a time. Our 
I will use this malicious face as an example. Let's try to replicate MFBD01 Pyro from Break Their Hearts. First of all, let's change the texture. Oh, and by the way, you can enable Marisa's old mother here. An enemy has three core components that you might want to modify. Enemy specific properties, spider body in our case. Enemy identifier, which has generic properties that can be applied to any enemy. And sometimes an enemy type. Machine for most enemies. If you are looking for something and you can't find it, it's probably somewhere in there. You can alter some settings here, like the maximum beam amount, projectile amount, projectile type, etc. You can also change current HP and max HP. Malicious face switches textures when damaged, so we need to remember that. Locate the part responsible for texture changing and replace the texture there too. I will use the explosive homing projector. Let's do something interesting with the beam. I will use the charged revolver beam. Set its damage really high and set it to ignore malicious faces so it doesn't kill itself. Lastly, use override full name in the enemy identifier to change the name and add a boss health bar component. Now I believe our creation is done. Note that the beams won't damage P1 because they are revolver beams. Let's try putting Pyro against Gabriel. When adjusting the difficulty setting of an enemy, which changes the behavior, you might get confused. How is a number supposed to represent difficulty? It's very simple. It goes from 0 to 4, 0 being harmless and 4 being brutal. The order of the difficulties is the same. Another thing to keep track of is object classes. For example, we cannot paste a game object as a grenade. We have to search for a grenade class to find suitable objects. As you can see, one gutter tank is shooting rockets while the other one uses four eject grenades. It is also possible to edit enemies spawned at the level itself. To do that, add a sandbox enemy component to your enemy and be sure to probably set what the enemy type it is, so that the game doesn't get confused. You can directly edit the spawner arm menu. Here's how to do it. Open the menu and press F7 to open Unity Explorer. Using the inspector, inspect an enemy button in the UI with the UI inspecting tool. Click on the spawning menu wrapper, then spawn menu, 
and inspect the spawnable object database. Now search for spawnable objects and replace whatever you want. After you are done, press F7 and close the menu. Did nothing change? Well, that's right. For the changes to take place, reload the level using restart mission. Now we can see we can spawn some uh, interesting things. Sure, some of them don't work properly, but Minus and something wicked work just fine. Also, you cannot kill something wicked after spawning it in. Now that we know our capabilities, why don't we have some fun with them? You might know that an enemy cannot be sanctified and puppeted at the same time. Well, we won't let the game tell us what we can or can't do. Tick the sanctified box in the enemy identifier. And why don't we try something else? Let's unpuppet the puppet. Now let's go over to editing terminals. It's actually really simple. Select the canvas of the terminal, locate the desired menu, and then edit the icons. Let's replicate the Hellbender from Breaker Hearts. To use cover in text, you must input the following command. Really easy. And that's pretty much it. I know there's a lot of stuff I could show, but that's not the point. With this tutorial, I wanted to show the possibilities and some examples so that I could inspire you to try something. So get creative, download mods and break the game. And take care!